Hello and welcome to the recorded version of the January 2021 Eaton Public Library Strategic Cuisine Cooking Class, Cooking for Gamers. This month we talked about uh, real-time strategy games and had a couple of examples such as Set, Pit, Galaxy Trucker, Space Cadets, and Labyrinth Treasure Hunt. We also mentioned that, of course, real-time strategy is really popular in video games. Now, what does this have to do with cooking? Well, all cooking endeavors are real-time strategy games because you are attempting to get all of your food done at the same time and in the right way. So uh, it's a wonderful exercise in real-time strategy cooking is. You also have substitutions. And then one of our dishes that we're making today, the spring roll wraps, is actually an exercise in real-time strategy while you're eating them because you eat one and make your own. And so the speed of eating them has to do with your speed of being able to make them. So go ahead and watch our video. I hope you enjoy the sweet potato nachos from ohmyveggies.com and the Asian spring roll wraps using my family uh, method of making them. Thanks for joining us, and I hope that you can make it to our February cooking class where we will be talking about living and legacy games. Hello, for those watching from home, this is Strategic Cuisine with the Eaton Public Library. We're going to be making Thai sweet potato nachos as originally presented on the ohmyveggies.com website, which is where you can find the original recipe. For this recipe, you will want a half cup measuring cup, tablespoon and teaspoon measuring cups, a grater, either a box grater or a flat grater like this, either one will work, as well as a peeler, knives, and cutting boards. Additionally, you'll want a a uh, baking tray, baking sheet, and some bowls to hold some stuff. Go ahead and set your oven to 400 degrees and we can get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is peel your sweet potatoes. So go ahead, just use your peeler and give those a peel. My sweet potatoes are done, but since I'm going to be peeling some other things as, such as carrots as well and using those, my oven's ready, uh, since I'm going to be peeling some carrots and using them in, for my second recipe, I'm going to peel all of those right now as well so that I can go ahead and put my peeler away. So just go ahead and sit these on the side. It's good to have a bowl that you can put them directly into and go ahead and peel your carrots. Once you have your stuff peeled, make sure you wash it off if you haven't already and go and rinse off your peeler and you can put it away. Keep the carrots that you're planning on using for this recipe and put the other carrots off to the side. Make sure your potatoes are here. So we can put those two guys together. Very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do after we've gotten our potatoes peeled is we're gonna to wanna to cut them. If you have a mandolin uh, cutter, they look kind of like, they were kind of like this design here on the cheese grater does, uh, where you would slide the, uh, slide the sweet potato across it and it would give you strips like this. And you can actually do that uh, for this recipe and just go ahead and use that. You can also, if you don't have one, you can also just use a knife and do thin cuts. So the easiest way to do this is gonna be to actually choose a side and make a slice, a very thin slice down it, because that will give you a flat edge. And with that flat edge, your potato isn't gonna move around if the potato's not moving around, you're less likely to hurt yourself when you're cutting. Let's go ahead and with a smooth rocking motion, cut down from the top of the potato all the way down through. Make nice, thin slices. You want them as even as you can get them so they're all as close to being the same as possible. That way they cook evenly. You could also, if you really wanted to, use a food processor but I find that that would damage the sweet potato a little too much. You can cut all the way down to the end. And you can, if you hold your uh, sweet potato with a claw-like motion, claw-like grasp, then that'll uh, reduce the chances of you hurting yourself as well. 
once you have your sweet potato cut, go ahead and either, uh, if you have it, you can spray your uh, baking tray with oil, or just go ahead and put the sweet potato into a bowl temporarily, because we're gonna coat it in a little bit of oil, and that will allow it to not stick to the pan. I'm gonna cut that one out a little bit. If you didn't pre-spray your cooking tray, go ahead and take just a, about a tablespoon of, of oil. You can use any kind of cooking oil you'd like. Pour it on your potatoes in the bowl. Mix them up so that they are well oiled all the way through. And then lay them on the baking tray. If you did oil your baking tray, you can skip this step and just go ahead and put the potatoes directly onto the baking tray. As you can see, two potatoes is a little too much for a single baking tray. So go ahead and put on as much as you can, add some salt, pepper, the oil on top of it, if you didn't already do that, and then put them in the oven for 10 minutes. Go ahead and throw these on a second baking tray. In after 10 minutes, we're going to pull these out and flip them and put them back in for another 10 minutes. Now that our potatoes are cooking, we can get a couple of other things done while they're working on it. So go ahead and take your carrot and we're going to shred this carrot down. So we're going to use the grater. And again, you can use either kind of grater, this kind or this kind. And go ahead and use the uh, set of holes that are larger. And we're just going to simply shred our carrot down. And how many carrots you do with this totally depends on how much you like shredded carrot. Uh, but in Thai cuisine, uh, shredded carrot is pretty common. So you want to make sure you have at least one carrot as a potential topping. If you start getting down to a point that your fingers are getting in danger, turn the carrot and just have that the next side. When you get down to the end and you've got just these tiny pieces, go ahead and get rid of them. And you'll see that you have a fair amount of carrot. Go ahead and put this into a bowl. Next, take your pepper and we're going to cut the pepper. Uh, there are several different ways of cutting a pepper very efficiently. And the one way is to cut the top off and then turn it and cut the ribs out. That's one way. Um, and that's actually a pretty decent way of doing it because in this one we want small chunks. So I'm just going to cut down through the through the um, pepper, which as you can see gives me the center here. So I can see where the center of the pepper is. And I'm just gonna cut down along the ribs so that I end up with pieces of pepper with no seeds, because I don't want the seeds. So I'm just gonna do that four or five times, depending on exactly how the pepper is configured. And you can see I still have this bottom, which I'm just gonna slice off. And now I have this pepper core, which I can get rid of. Now I'm going to take this pepper and I'm just going to slice it down a little bit more into small, fairly small chunks. Now how small the chunks, or if you wanted to do strips, you could do strips too. You make it, it's entirely up to you. Once you've got your pepper cut, go ahead and throw it in a bowl. It's probably easiest to make half inch wide to three quarter inch wide strips and then chop them down. Next, let's go ahead and chop up our green onions and our cilantro. Now, I'm not a big cilantro fan, so while this recipe calls for a half cup of cilantro, I'm not gonna use nearly that much. But go ahead and uh, cut up however much cilantro you want and your green onion, make sure you've washed them first. To cut your cilantro, you can actually leave it in its bundle, if it's, still, if it's fresh cilantro, and just simply cut straight down through it and get rid of this piece. Rough chop it couple times and boom your cilantro is done
And if you cut down far enough, you can go ahead and get rid of the rest of this. Now, our second recipe can also use cilantro as a topping, which is one of the reasons I, I cut so much of this. Go ahead and cut also your green onions. With green onions, you're probably gonna to wanna to chop the very top off, and then you're gonna to wanna to chop the white part off down here at the bottom. You're interested in this green part here in the middle. The greener, the better. Go ahead and get rid of the pieces that you don't want, and then take the rest of it, chop it down, and throw it into a bowl. Timer on my potatoes just beat, so I'm gonna flip them over. To flip your potatoes, you're gonna want a spatula and your potatoes. Simply go underneath and flip them over. This is where you find out whether or not you put enough oil on them. It's a good idea to not do this flying like I am. Definitely put these on the top of your stove uh, so that you are working on a flat surface. Flip all the potatoes over and put them back in for another 10 minutes. At this point, you should have everything that you need to chop, chopped except for your garlic. So we're going to, in a moment, cut up our garlic and we're going to mix up our sauce. So go ahead and get yourself a bowl and get yourself your sauce ingredients. We are going to need the cutting board here for a few minutes. You're going to want some soy sauce, rice vinegar, brown sugar, toasted sesame oil, if I can find my toasted sesame oil, there it is. toasted sesame oil, peanuts for the side, your peanut butter, and some water. Uh, you may or may not want some sriracha, depending on your personal tastes. So starting with the uh, peanut butter, make sure that you have a natural peanut butter that does not have any extra sugar. Go ahead and open that up. If you need to, give it a stir. If it's been sitting in your refrigerator for a little while, it likely has solidified and it's gonna be harder to stir. Um, but go ahead and give it a stir. You're gonna want a half cup of peanut butter. Um, so go ahead and use your half cup measuring cup. That's what we have that out here for. Go ahead, and I'm just going to pour it in because mine's nice and liquidy. Pour it into a bowl. Once you have that in, you're going to be adding all of your other sauce liquid ingredients, including two tablespoons of rice vinegar, one table, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and one tablespoon of sesame oil. Doesn't matter really what order you do those in. So just go ahead and measure them out and add them in. So again, all with a tablespoon. Make sure you pour them over the top of your container if you think you are trustworthy enough to do that. Not sure I am. There's my soy sauce done. If you have a helper, this is a good time to have the helper put stuff away. Two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. And if you get your proportions off a little bit in this, if you, if you pour some a little bit extra in, it's okay, uh, doesn't really matter. We're done with this now, we can put that away. And we're gonna do, but that doesn't wanna open. We're gonna do our uh, one tablespoon of our sesame oil. Pour that in. Yep. Now we're gonna want two teaspoons of brown sugar. Then we're gonna start stirring. And we're gonna wanna add a little bit of water. The water is to thin this out. Um, so if it's, if it's too thick, you wanna add the water to it. So uh, go ahead and add your two teaspoons of brown sugar. Now this can be packed or not, doesn't really matter. There we go. And we can close that up. 
and we're gonna want to add some water here. But I'm gonna stir this up now. I'm stirring with a, with a knife. That's not the recommended way of stirring things. You want to beat this into a nice, smooth consistency. So a fork works really well for that. So as you can see, I now have a nicely mixed uh, peanut sauce, but this is a little thick, so I'm going to add some water to it. Um, probably one tablespoon in my case, because I actually like this pretty thick. I would also, at this time, if I wanted to, add a teaspoon of sriracha or red pepper flakes. Um, but your mileage will vary on that, so because that depends on whether or not you like sriracha and red pepper flakes. So I'm just going to add some water, and then we'll add the last thing to this. The final thing we want to do is cut up our garlic. We're going to want one clove of garlic, which is going to go directly into our sauce. If you think your sauce is a too lumpy, like mine is still... Uh, pretty thick, you can add a little bit more water. But you're gonna take one clove of garlic and simply mince it up and throw it straight into your sauce. Doesn't have to be cooked. Uh, if you don't like garlic uh, that way, you can sprinkle in some garlic powder. Um, use about one teaspoon of garlic powder um, to have the same effect as a clove of garlic. So uh, as always, to cut our clove of garlic, we're just going to get our, our um, piece here, I think I may have two pieces, but get our piece here, put the flat of the blade on it, and crush. That should allow us to get the skin off of the garlic nice and easily. Go ahead and cut off any remaining pieces from the attachment to the bulb. You can get rid of those, you don't want them. And mince up this garlic. Now you may want to do this on a plastic cutting board that you can clean easily because once you cut this, uh, you're going to find that everything from this point on would taste like garlic unless you really clean this cutting board well. So either use a second cutting board or um, use a plastic cutting board that you can clean easily for this piece. Now, uh, we're also going to, at this point, because, because we're here, uh, this is going to go directly in to our sauce, but we're going to be doing another uh, recipe here that's also going to use garlic. So we're going to cut up that garlic right now because our cutting board and our knife all ready to smell and taste like garlic. So we're going to do that here immediately after stirring this. Go ahead and stir your garlic in. let that sit. Like I said, add a little bit more liquid if you think you need to. Uh, four tablespoons um, might do it for you. Uh, I like mine a little thicker, as I said. So um, again, I'm going to just simply cut up another uh, clove of garlic because I'm going to want that for my next recipe. Once you have the nachos transferred to a plate, go ahead and start assembling your Nacho nachos. Take your sauce and drizzle it on top, or in my case, pour, because I really like this stuff nice and thick. I'm gonna reserve some of this for uh, our second dish. Toss it into your nachos a little bit if need be. Totally depends on, on the thickness. And then top with your remaining ingredients. A little bit of shredded carrot, red pepper, green onion, and some of that fresh chopped cilantro. Like I said, not a big fan. Then I would actually top it with some more of the sauce because this sauce is pretty darn good. Now, here comes the, here comes the real-time strategy part of this dish. Your goal is to get this dish to the table before somebody eats it. Everybody's gonna be trying to eat it on route. So, uh, once you have this served, put it on a, serve it to a big, a big plate, big tray, so that everybody can get at it all at once. And enjoy your Thai peanut sauce nachos. Oh, one last thing, forgot. 
got to have some peanuts on your on your thing. To do the peanuts, you're going to have to put them on coal, but ideally these would be crushed. Now, crushing peanuts is not hard. If you're if you're really a uh, force of nature and like doing things the, the truly manual way, just go ahead and crush them onto the top manually. Uh, but if you're a little bit smarter, put them onto a uh, cutting board, like so. Take any flat bottomed or mostly flat bottomed uh, glass or glass container and just go ahead and crush your peanuts down. A lot faster and a lot less work. Then go ahead and top your nachos. Bon appetit. If you're going to be using tofu for our second dish, you want to start it pressing now. Go ahead and open it and drain the water into the sink. Take your tofu, wrap it in a towel, make sure it's lint free and dust free. You can use paper towels or you can use a cloth towel like this one. Put it on a surface that's okay for it to get wet and that can absorb some of the liquid, such as a bamboo cutting board or a wooden cutting board, bamboo is best. And then put something heavy on top, like a couple of plates. Go ahead and set it aside for about 15 minutes, at least 30 minutes, ideally. To move on with our second dish, we're going to want a platter or bowls or plate in order to put stuff on, our cutting board our, and our knife. We're gonna be doing chicken here in a little bit, which is why I have the plastic cutting board out, but we're, not, we're gonna do that last. In order to go further, Go ahead and trim, if you're cutting whatever vegetables you're using, you're gonna trim them down. So we're gonna be making uh, what I call lettuce wraps, which have nothing to do with wrapping things in lettuce. So we're going, I'm gonna start with, this, with celery. If you're cutting celery for lettuce wraps, you're, you're gonna want long-ish pieces, but you're gonna want them to be fairly soft and flexible. So take your celery and kind of split it somewhat-ish down the middle and then turn it into long strips. Then, after you've got long strips, cut them into a length that's about two and a half to three inches long, no more than that. You want them to be pretty skinny strips. Once you have them stripped down, go ahead and put them onto your serving plate. Just simply choose a spot for them. We're going to be doing the same general procedure with all of the vegetables. Pepper is going to be somewhat different from what we did earlier in that we actually want long pieces, not short pieces. So I'm going to, um, again, cut the top off and then cut the sides. But this time, Instead of cutting it into uh, chunks, I'm going to actually make long skinny strips out of my pepper. And we're gonna leave them there, those long skinny strips. Again, put it on my serving tray. And do that with the whole pepper. Continue doing that with all your vegetables. Uh, if you're going to use something like a cucumber, make sure you peel it first. Once it's peeled, I'm going to cut that piece off. Simply cut it in half. That'll give you, again, a nice flat surface to work with. Make cuts down the length of the cucumber. And if you feel like you need to, you could turn it and make a vertical cut. And then cut it again down into short lengths. You can do this with zucchini, pineapple, whatever you'd like. Carrots, uh, because carrots are pretty pokey, I actually highly recommend that you shred carrot and add that to your 
uh, platter in a shredded format. There we go. Our vegetables are ready. All we need to do is cook our chicken. Once your tofu has been pressed, take it, put it on your cutting board, and slice it down into pieces that are approximately a half to three quarters of an inch across. Take the block and turn it, and continue slicing until you have long strips, both sides. Finally, cut across the blocks to turn them into cubes, and then transfer them to a bowl. The tofu can be cooked as it is, or to give it a little bit more texture, add some salt, mix it up, and then toss it with about a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm just gonna eyeball it here and get it all over the place. Mix it all up till the tofu is coated, and then add some more. If you're cooking chicken as part of your lettuce wraps dish, uh, make sure that you have cleared off all of your non-cooked uh, ingredients because we're going to uh, open the open up the chicken and slice it, uh, and then we're going to be actually done with all of our cutting. So to do this, um, go ahead and just open your container of chicken and make sure you're using a plastic cutting board. Okay, plastic cutting boards are much easier to clean. They can be put in the dishwasher, and then you don't have to worry about uh, contamination. That's also why we're doing this the very last thing. So to prep your chicken for your uh, wraps, make sure it's defrosted. It's really best if it's defrosted most of the way, but not all the way. And then let's go ahead and slice down. You can either use uh, chicken breasts or chicken tenders or whatever. Uh, I like it cut into fairly small pieces for this dish. Um, so I'm just gonna slice this down. The other thing you can do is cut it into strips. Either one works for this. So uh, there we go. So if I was cutting into pieces, that's what I would want. And I'm just gonna transfer that to a bowl. And then I'll show you if I were gonna um, do it into strips. I would cut uh, long skinny strips like that. And these can actually be mixed and cooked uh, together, won't cause too much of a problem. Um, so long skinny strips uh, or small chunks, either way works just fine for this dish. There you go. However, I would recommend that you pick one and stick with it. At this point, whether you are doing chicken or tofu, you're going to want to get your pans on the stove and get them heated. Set both stoves to set the stove to about a five and a half or medium heat. Go ahead and let the the oil come to a, a sheen. If you're using sesame oil like I am, it has a much higher flash point than other oils such as canola or vegetable oil, but you can still use these. When your oil is ready, if you prepped garlic and ginger, go ahead and add some of that to your pan. You should get a sizzle. It's gonna cook really fast, so be ready to move. This pan is not quite as hot. Go ahead and take your protein and dump it into your pan. Make sure you have separate stirring utensils for each pan. It's beginning to look fairly cooked. It isn't quite done. You can still see some, some of the raw chicken in there. We're going to want to add some additional seasoning to it. Now, what you use is totally up to you. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic chili sauce and soy sauce. You can also go with just the soy sauce. Now, I want to make sure this uh, chicken in particular has some flavor, so I'm going to add my soy sauce now. As well as a little of my garlic chili paste. That was probably a little more than was necessary. 
chicken is done. I don't want to reuse this bowl, so it's going to go off to the side. I'm going to get a new bowl that I'll serve the chicken from. Make sure to get as much out of the pan as you can. Turn off the heat and take it off the heat. You'll want to add some water to it and put it back on so the water will, will boil off and loosen any debris that's stuck to the pan. And let that sit. So I'm going to do the exact same thing to it. And add some garlic chili paste. We're going to do the same thing with this tofu. We're going to turn the heat off, take it off the heat, and put it in another bowl. Good idea, whenever you have pans, always put the handles off over the counter, not out over the empty space. For the real-time strategy component of this dish, you're going to want to do the last thing. You're going to want to take these rice paper wrappers, also called spring roll wrappers, and put them in some hot water. You want a large, shallow bowl for this purpose. Get them just wet. And then transfer them to your plate. Once they're on your plate, you'll find, see that it can bend. Go ahead and load your rice paper wrapper up with some of the vegetables and your tofu or chicken. Don't overload though. Choose which pieces you want to go on. Add a sauce if you would like. I find that thick sauces such as hoisin or this really good Saigon sizzle sauce work best. But you can also add something as simple as sriracha. I'm going to add some hoisin to this first one. You can also put the hoisin on first. That works well as well. Add your sauce. Works really well if you put these in bowls ahead of time. Take your rice paper wrapper from the near side, wrap it up, over, tuck it under, and then fold up the edges on the two near sides. And then, just like a burrito, wrap it up. There you have it. Nicely contained, spring roll style rice lettuce wrap. I'll show you that again. Take your rice paper wrapper, get it wet. Make sure you get the whole thing wet. If you have a, if you have a bowl that's a, a pan or a bowl that's wide enough to just dip it in, that's great. Put it on your plate. Make sure a little bit of it's hanging over the edge because that'll allow you to grab it and roll easily. Put your sauce on. And Load it up with some ingredients. Again, make sure not to add too much. You can also add some of the toppings from earlier, such as the scallions, the cilantro, a little bit of lime juice, or some peanuts. Go ahead and fold over the top. 
tuck the two sides up and roll. There we go.